Um, so what you'll see with Reset when I launch it now... As a Beth Rogozinski has in her hand something that could become the first digital therapeutic for mental and behavioral health approved as a medical device by the U.S. government. It's called Reset, an app for substance abuse patients. And really, this is the only device that you have with you almost 24 hours a day. Um, and crises don't always happen at convenient times. When faced with a craving, a patient can describe how they're feeling, get drug refusal advice, or even earn rewards like free coffee or store discounts. If I'm feeling that I'm having cravings and triggers right now, by me even picking up the app, I'm not picking up that drug. But it also enables them to begin to get some deeper insights into their own patterns of use. Developer Paratherapeutics is also working on an app for schizophrenics and virtual reality programs that help post-traumatic stress disorder patients re-experience trauma in a safe environment. That's a concept being studied at Stanford Medicine's Virtual Reality Clinic. Neuropsychiatrist Kim Bullock shows me how she uses virtual reality to help deal with patient fears, like preparing for an MRI test or dealing with hair-raising phobias. Bullock also treats patients with debilitating conditions like cerebral palsy and multiple sclerosis and those with chronic pain using a VR form of mirror therapy that tricks the brain into stimulating weaker limbs. How dramatically and how quickly within one session they can have relief is, is just mind-boggling to me. And I definitely have patients that are needing less medication. I think it's a great non-pharmacological uh, way. If we could add this other layer where there might be um, permanent changes that can occur, um, I think it really adds to pain management options. At Stanford's Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, hundreds of children are using virtual reality for anxiety and pain reduction. Nine-year-old Blaine was in a go-kart accident that tore the skin from his arm, making it extremely painful to change his dressings. Completely immersed in the experience. Um, he's even figuring out how to use his other arm to tap on the side, and he's changing the game in the middle to redirect him right back into the experience, and they're able to successfully do the dressing change without the anesthesia. What are you watching? Uh, I'm under the seat looking at sea snakes. There's a medicine called midazolam, which is given to patients to help reduce anxiety preoperatively, and we saw a reduction in the amount of midazolam that we had to give to patients, and in, with respect to pain, when you distract somebody from a painful experience, they subjectively report less pain. Dr. Caruso says so far there are no complaints at all from patients using the immersive technology, and that even though they're quickly expanding the program, they're having trouble keeping up with all the patient requests to wear a VR headset. Oh, wow, yeah, that is like nice. the tiniest fish in the world. Mark New, CGTN, Stanford, California.